I will present something much more specific uh, on the base of uh, documents of monastic uh, uh, cultural. Uh, <coughs> while I was trying to understand the uh, relationship between a peasant, a peasant society, because I'm interested in economic history, I had always the problem to understand what was happening actually between all these small people. We are not talking um, in this kind of documents um, only of aristocrats or only of emperors, but we have to deal mostly with uh, usual everyday people. And we are traveling now to the region of Izmir today, Izmir, and I concentrate my research at this river today, Bairagli, in uh, the 13th century Bari. Um, the documents we have uh, do not have the same character as the Patriarch age document. Here we have to, to deal with um, economic transactions, we have to deal with, the, uh, with uh, gifts and sales of land uh, to a monastery located uh, here, somehow. Um, we have to begin with the problem that we have something written, we begin with the text and then we have to try to, uh, to, uh, to use uh, methods or tools of the social network analysis, but it's a long way just to come up to that point. And first we have uh, the uh, manuscript. Uh, we can see uh, here how uh, such a manuscript uh, looks like. We have an edition of these documents, an odd edition uh, from Miklos and Müller, uh, but I have to admit that in many cases I had to see the, uh, the original the, uh, in order to, to fill in the gap, to fill the gap uh, because we have some gaps in this edition and we do have to look always uh, to uh, the manuscript just to, have, to be sure that that what you read is actually correct. We have also this problem with our editions. If they're not critical, then we have the problem also just to, to go back to the manuscript and then uh, go back to the text and then you can begin. If you're not sure about the text, you can actually begin. And after using the material only of 42 documents uh, regarding this village in Bari, uh, and after we united all together, I had this result, where you can see red are the agents of people, and here green are what I call institutions, for example, monasteries, and and uh, orange are uh, the places. And the case of Bari is about 42 documents. The uh, entire Hapular is about 180 documents. It's only uh, a case study. I didn't take into consideration all the material. That's another step I have to make in the future. I'm waiting for the new edition of the material. I hope it will be soon. Otherwise, I'm, I have to work with what I have and with the help of uh, the uh, photos of the uh, codex. My interest was concentrated uh, uh, foremost um, in a list of uh, peasants. In other regions, uh, for other regions of the Zanzibar, Byzantine territories, we have long or shorter lists of uh, peasants. We know the names, what they possessed, what they, uh, how many were. And uh, many researchers, especially Leo, has done statistical research on this material. This is not the case for the region of Smyrna in the 13th century, in the first half of the 13th century. And um, the only list we find in this uh, Hartulari is this one, you can see here, where it begins to register all the, uh, the peasants of this village. This is until this point. 
And we have about 96 names. And what is in register is the families. And after reading the whole text and be sure that we have done it correctly, first I have to explain what, uh, what I have done. Working with Aura, this uh, program we have already known today, it seems some, it's something like that. At first, I have created here this uh, node classes uh, for uh, this uh, list of peasants. The agents and the location, actually, we have here only one location, Bali, but we have 96 agents. And usually, for the whole material, we used also this network economy, family, and place. And here you can see that is um, uh, very helpful and you have to give also uh, the uh, date of this document. We have the 30th uh, March of uh, 1235. And after doing that, what does it mean actually? We have the names, it's only a part, but here I have listed the 96 names and in order to demonstrate their relation, their uh, family relation, I have just to, they, they appear on the left and at the top, and I have to find then uh, who was relevant to whom. That created a connection between two persons. After doing that, uh, we have this result. You, you can see Vari at the center, and as clusters, you see the families. One family here, other family here. Um, it's, a, it's a kind of static model because we, we do not have any information if there are other relationships other relationship between uh, these clusters. We have only these clusters as they are registered uh, the, the, the father, the mother, and the children, and possibly other, and other possible relatives. And after that, I have tried uh, to uh, see, and I, I, I have used this method because I was just trying to understand who, uh, which persons uh, are uh, sometimes neglected. If we read the documents very quickly or just looking for specific material, for example, I just want to, uh, to search for taxes of this village, I cannot understand which persons are very important and at which level. By uh, looking uh, the centrality in between us, I uh, found out uh, that the person with the name uh, Michael Gunaropoulos has, it was very central for this village and for the uh, transaction and for the um, uh, interaction in the village, especially in the network family. And you see another member of his family, Ioannis Gunaropoulos. But we find out other names which are coming, uh, which also appear. And um, something, uh, this is not a surprising result actually. Gunaropoulos uh, and his family is the main case uh, depicted in our documents from Vali. In, a, in another uh, network, uh, the adult of economy, uh, we find other results. We find that very central persons are two uh, arts of the uh, monastery of Lemos, and that's very uh, clear, uh, that's very uh, simple to understand, since they were responsible for everything that had to do with the financial situation of uh, this monastery, of the monastery of Lesbos, and everything that has to do with transactions. Every sale came uh, and was decided or approved or uh, signed as well from these persons. Uh, while the other two persons, uh, Monaropoulos is also very uh, active in this uh, network, and also Vasilios Lateros is a person who at the beginning, uh, one in the first documents of our uh, um, uh, village um, is very prominent if, 
because uh, he was the owner actually of this village, which later came to the possession of Lemnos. But I had also another uh, network to see. Uh, the network of witnesses, witnesses that appear to, uh, as uh, the one who uh, sign uh, a document, the one who are present by transaction. And in this case, we find uh, a person uh, with the name Xenos Megas. He was one of the persons listed in 1235. That means uh, uh, that he and he appears in many documents as uh, a witness. Perhaps this is an indication of his importance that the persons are uh, and the persons who uh, sign uh, such a document are appearing at least for a specific uh, period very often. Other persons, it's, uh, are members of the family of Naropoli and some uh, other individuals. And the last thing I wanted to, to see, uh, the last thing I researched was uh, if, we can, uh, if we can have a picture of a village in, a, or in all this uh, period, in the period between uh, 1197 and until the end actually of the 13th century. And here you see um, uh, the uh, notes from the end of the 12th century until the end of the 13th century in the network of family. And you see here this point. This is the list we have from 1235. But this is a unique case. Otherwise, we are dealing with um, a lower number of uh, notes in our documents, in, especially in this network. Uh, as I have already said, I have used only 42 documents. Um, the next step will be just to see the whole, the entire uh, calculary and just try them, then to understand what was really happening. It's only a piece of the puzzle. And I hope that I will be able to do it, but it takes a lot of time and uh, one has to, uh, to read very carefully the sources and to understand really what was happening and who was connected to whom. That's my presentation, that was my uh, case and book. Mm -hmm.